catenography. This is the principle of the measurement of exhaled carbon dioxide. All metabolic processes will consume oxygen and produce carbon dioxide. This is then returned to the heart via venous blood, which then pumps to the lungs via the right ventricle. Alveolar ventilation takes place where carbon dioxide will be exchanged and exhaled. The capnograph is the continuous monitoring of the concentration of CO2 in respiratory gases, represented in graphical form, where time is on the x-axis and expired partial pressure of carbon dioxide is on the y-axis. The end tidal carbon dioxide is the maximum concentration of carbon dioxide in the respiratory gases at the end of the exhaled breath. So some definitions. Capnometry is the numerical display of CO2. And capnography is the graphical display of CO2 versus time, the waveform. There is also calimetric capnography, which is where a pH sensitive filter changes from purple to yellow when it detects CO2. What are the indications? NAP4, a study by the Royal College of Anaesthetists and the Difficult Airway Society, found that airway complications occurred more frequently in the ICU and ED than in theatres, and these were more likely to lead to permanent harm or death. In many of these cases, the failure to use capnography was a contributing factor to the death. Guidelines have since been issued which recommend the use of capnography. Endotracheal tube placement. Confirmation of the placement of the endotracheal tube using clinical signs has been shown to be unreliable. Fogging of the tube will occur with esophageal intubation, as will chest wall movement. Even the use of breath sounds has been shown to not be totally reliable. The lungs produce CO2 constantly and so, when the endotracheal tube is placed, the best confirmation you can have that it is in the trachea rather than the esophagus is the presence of CO2. However, one needs to be also cautious with this interpretation. CO2 can be present in the stomach if the patient has been bagged, for example. It's wise to see several capnography waveforms before being happy that the tube is in the right place. Also be aware that the trace may be even harder to interpret if the patient is in cardiac arrest due to the poor venous return. Monitoring mechanical ventilation. Low or high carbon dioxide levels can indicate how well the ventilated patient is. If CO2 levels are rising, it could be that one needs to increase the patient's tidal volumes or their respiratory rate to help blow off the CO2. If the CO2 falls significantly, it could be that the patient has developed a problem with their circulation, which means that the CO2 is not being returned to the lungs effectively. Increasingly, capnography is now also being used on the spontaneously breathing patient particularly those with chronic lung problems such as COPD. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. The presence or relative absence of CO2 can indicate the effectiveness of the compressions. The better the compressions, the more blood you are returning to the heart, and so more CO2 is produced. How does it work? Infrared absorption spectroscopy. Two sides to the device, an infrared light emitter and an infrared light detector. As CO2 passes the emitter, light of a certain wavelength, 4.3 microns, is absorbed by the CO2. The detector then senses this drop in the infrared light and translates this into a number or a graphical display. Types. Mainstream. The CO2 detector sits in line with the endotracheal tube and detects the CO2 at that point. These can be rather bulky and heavy compared to the alternative, but they do give a more immediate reading. Side stream. The detector is now remote from the patient and attached to a short piece of tubing, which is then connected to the endotracheal tube via capillary tube. 
The gas is then taken to the detector via this capillary tube. Although less bulky than the mainstream, it does mean a slight delay between changes in the patient's expired CO2 and this being reflected on the monitor. They also include the need for a suction pump to draw the sample into the measurement chamber and there can be inaccuracies caused by suction pump function. Phases of capnography. The capnography trace can be broken down into five phases as can be seen here. Phase 1, A to B. This is the inspiratory baseline and this is where inspiration is taking place so no CO2 is being detected. The end of phase 1 is the beginning of expiration. However, this is composed of gases expired from the unventilated mechanical and physiological dead space so the line remains at zero. Phase 2, B to C. This is early expiration. The line rises rapidly as the CO2 from the anatomical dead space is replaced by CO2 rich alveolar gas. Phase 3, C to D. This is late expiration. All the gas that passes the sensor is alveolar gas and this results in the alveolar plateau. This has a slight upward stroke because not all alveoli have the same pre partial pressure of CO2. Those alveoli with the lower VQ ratio empty more slowly, contributing to the later part of phase 3 which leads to the slight upward slope. Due to various pathologies, this slope can be increased, for example with a bronchospasm when the CO2 cannot be exhaled as quickly. Phase 4, D to E. This is the beginning of the next breath and the CO2 is returning rapidly to zero. Phase 5, E to A. During inspiration, the CO2 value is normally zero, so we return to the baseline. Abnormal capnographs. The height of the line gradually decreases over time, i.e. the amount of CO2 being exhaled is falling. This can happen for several reasons. The patient could be hyperventilating, so they are blowing off their CO2 faster than they are making it. Obviously, looking at the patient will confirm this for you as their respiratory rate may also be high. Anything that increases dead space will also drop the CO2, so a reduced cardiac output or increased alveolar pressure or a pulmonary embolism. There could also be a decrease in metabolism in hypothermia, for example. Gradually increasing height of line or levels of CO2 increasing. This could be caused by hypoventilation. The patient is breathing too slowly, maybe because they have a head injury or the mandatory respiratory rate on mechanical ventilation needs to be increased. End tidal not returning to the baseline at the end of inspiration and the height of each line is increasing with each breath. The patient is rebreathing their CO2. This could be because the valve in the circuit is not working well or that the patient is not being given enough time by the mandatory respiratory rate set to clear their CO2. This is also known as breath stacking. Here we have lost the flat plateau to the line. This is an indication that alveolar CO2 is taking longer to reach the sensor, indicating an airway obstruction. This is the line commonly encountered in those patients with restrictive airways disease or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It could also be caused by something in the upper airway such as a mucus plug, foreign body or kinked endotracheal tube. In this example we can see that the line has changed in the opposite way to the other example. The CO2 is not reaching the CO2 sensor on its way out. This can often indicate a leak in the circuit, commonly a cuff that is leaking and the CO2 is being expired via that route, thereby missing the sensor out completely.
In this example, the line is falling rather dramatically and can even stay at baseline completely. This means there is no CO2 passing the sensor and could indicate apnea, the patient has stopped breathing for some reason, the ET tube has become disconnected, or the patient has gone into cardiac arrest.